Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I want to share with you lovely ladies and gentlemen how I turn spinners into winners. So spinners or roulette orbs are one of the older mechanics in pad and in essence they just change colors and at first they look daunting and intimidating because you're like, well my nice board is changing, how do I match? But at the same time, while it may be a bit intimidating, I strongly believe that spinners are one of the better mechanics in the game, simply because they can actually be overcome by puzzling skills. Yes, you can use actives and various other approaches to deal with them, but the fact that you can solve it via matching is amazing. By comparison, damage absorption is a completely garbage mechanic because it relies on using a specific active skill or you're never actually going to pass the floor, whereas spinners, you can actually overcome them with intelligent matching. And for myself, I'm quite confident in my ability to tackle spinners and I want to share with you my tips and tricks of how you can manipulate them to enhance your overall gameplay experience. So what are spinners? Spinners or roulettes are essentially orbs that will be changing colors at a fixed interval basis. And for the most part, the vast majority of spinners will be on a one second interval timer, which means in a six second cycle, it will actually go through the whole six elements and then return back to the start. Just be also mindful of the fact that hazard orbs can be pushed into spinners and they will be changed into red and then the cycle continues. You will never be able to have a spinner create hazards out of nowhere, so don't be afraid of putting your hazards into there. Finally, just be mindful of the fact that locked orbs will not change or spin within spinners because they are locked, which in turn can be a pseudo counter to overcome them if you're feeling overwhelmed. So what are some ways we can take advantage of spinners? And the reason why I say this is because spinners can be turned into an advantage because they will be changing colors, which means you can possibly fish out or acquire orbs that are important for yourself. So the first thing I want to showcase is that you can tap and hold spinners. So jumping into like a pre-made dungeon here, I have two spinners on my board and they're not synchronized and they're spinning at their own one second interval rate. And I do have 15 seconds of movement time, which is quite excessive, but it's good for example purposes. So when I say tap and hold, what I mean is if I tap say the middle spinner, it will stop spinning and the other orb keeps spinning, but this orb doesn't as you hold them, which means in theory, you can tap and hold multiple spinners if you are encountering multiple different ones and they will eventually be synchronized. And when spinners are synchronized, you can do some cool tricks with this. In addition to that, if you ever have any type of active skill that spawns X number of a certain orb, wait for your spinners to be synchronized for that specific color. For instance, if I had a card that makes me three dark orbs at random, I'm gonna wait for both my spinners to be dark, and then when I use that active skill, it won't target the spinning orbs, it'll target other stuff so I don't lose out on orb generation. The next thing I wanna highlight is fishing out key colors. So, because spinners are rotating and they will keep changing regardless of what orb is put inside, you can potentially fish out an important color. So in this case here, let's say I want to make lots and lots and lots of dark combos. So I could have one of my orbs starting as dark and then I'm gonna wait for the other spinner to become dark. And then I am going to fish it out. That becomes dark. That becomes dark. That's gonna eventually become dark. That became dark. This is gonna become dark eventually. Point of the matter is you can keep fishing out orbs and if you have excessive amounts of movement time and this is actually an approach for Mikage is you need to actually match multiple dark combos. So fishing out key colors is actually an important skill for spinners and it's a way for you to basically kind of generate or create orbs. The next highlight or strategy I wish to highlight is removing hazards. So because you know that hazards will eventually be changed into red, we can take advantage of those. So I'm going to use A10 and he makes me a bunch of jammers, which is inconsiderate. But if I want to, I can get rid of all of these jammers. So what I would do is I'd start off a non jammer orb and I just start slowly pushing them into position. And you see how they turn red and now I've suddenly got rid of all my jammers. You can take this if there's lots of poison orbs, lots of other problems. You can overcome these with relative ease, which is definitely pleasant. And then the last thing I want to showcase or highlight is how you can strategically time your spinners to end on a specific color. And this I feel is most important when you have to deal with multiple spinners at the same time. So 
at this point in time, endgame content is actually quite flushed with spawns that will create multiple spinners. And again, it can feel intimidating, but we can intelligently plan out how we manipulate the orbs. So what this involves doing is tapping the spinners and synchronizing them all up so they're the correct colors you want them to be, so they're at a certain interval timer. And then you're going to examine the amount of movement time you have. And I'm going to assume that, for my example, you have a one second spinner, spinner interval, which means it takes six seconds for it to cycle through the whole thing. And what you've got to do is determine the color you wish to end on. Basically, the idea is you're going to use up all of your movement time and then when your movement time is expired and therefore your orb is dropped and matches are made, the spinners will be the specific color that you want them to actually be. So I have a little tiny formula to use. And the idea is the color you need to start moving orbs on. Basically, when you start the actual movement of orbs, the spinners have to be this specific color. And to determine what color you start on, you figure out what your ending color is minus your backtrack number. So to determine your backtrack number, you will subtract multiples of six from your movement time, which will result in your backtrack number. So for the example of my team here, I have 15 seconds of movement time, which means that, well, let's say I have 14 seconds because it's written here. With 14 seconds of movement time, I'm going to minus every six I can. So I basically minus 12, and then I'm left with the largest whole number that's not having a six within it. Well, you can't minus six from it. And that means I have two, which means my backtrack number is two. So for my example, let's say I wanted to end on dark with 14 seconds. I would start moving orbs on green. Using up my entire time, I'll end on dark. So what this looks like will be this. So I'm gonna create two spinners here and I will synchronize them up so that they are gonna be the same here. and. I have 15 seconds of movement time, so I'm going to minus 6 until I can no longer, so I'm down to 3, which means I backtrack 3. And backtracking 3 means I go for, I start in dark, so now I'm on light, I'm on green, and I'm on blue. So if I start moving orbs when the spinners are blue, they will finish at dark. And this can be important, like in this case here, they're all kind of close together, which means in theory, you could potentially get like a VDP out of here, you can make rows, whatever you need to match, it becomes easier. So just to show, put an example, I'm not going to do any fancy matching, I'm going to start moving orbs on blue, I'm doing whatever I want, la di da di da di da, as long as you don't drop your orb preemptively, the spinners will end on that specific color. So I'm just going to put some dark orbs there so it does match as dark so it, like it looks a little cooler and boom they end the orb drops automatically and it's timed perfectly so in order to show this in a much more exciting fashion i've queued up a couple of like highlight clips from like md2 or athena non-descended so hard content where lots of spinners are present so let us now enjoy that little bit of gameplay footage Spinners are fun. Oh, hot diggity damn. That was cool. So, in conclusion, spinners may feel intimidating initially, but at the same time, if you utilize the techniques of like tapping and holding to queue up spinners, you fish out key colors, you can get rid of hazards, or strategically 
timing the spinners to end on a specific color, you will find yourself actually turning spinners into winners and no longer being afraid of them and almost actually seeking them out because you now have the capacity to overcome them and basically fish out key orbs with potential relative ease. Now, that being said, let me know how you approach spinners and if this article slash video was helpful overall. With that being said, hopefully all have a truly fantastic day. I wish you all the best luck in your own pad adventures and happy puzzling.